<laughs> so we're students at the IBS at SKKU. Uh, I'm a first year PhD student. My name's Andrew. Oh. <laughs> Folks, you tell you. A few moments later. We're students at IBS at SKKU. I'm a first year PhD student and my name's Andrew Yu. Uh, since I'm I'm like kind of American, the director wanted to show like a more international uh, representation of the institute, so I was picked. <laughs> And with animal fMRI, we try to look at the circuitry of the brain. So how does one part of the brain interact with another? And since it's animals, we can be invasive, even though MRI is great for being non-invasive. So we could uh, manipulate the circuitry of the brain to see how it affects the overall brain activity, the function of the brain essentially. So we'll show, first I'll show, since I'm an animal fMRI researcher, I'll show how we set up and scan mouse in our scanners. Uh, we'll be giving it a four pulse stimulation and we'll see how, what the pooled response looks like on the image. So 
this right here is our animal fMRI. We have the 9.4 Tesla man over here and our 15.2. Unfortunately, we're we have an external user using the 15.2, so I can't show you the 15.2. Show you the 15.2. Uh, but anyway, one thing to know is that we're the only place in Korea that has 15.2 Tesla men, so we're very proud of that. So with mouse Tesla MRI, there's a lot of things we could do with it. Uh, with, we can give it stimulation such as four pulse stimulation with electrodes, uh, visual with lights, or even smell. And uh, another very interesting way we could do it is through optogenetics. So, oops. If you look at this mouse over here, it has a, we put a fiber in an area that we want to look at. And in this one, it expresses something called channel rhodopsin. So when you shine light in that area, it activates the area, and we can see it in the fMRI, what other part of the brain lights up. So it's basically a big functional connectivity study. So we're going to be scanning him. So bold isn't a direct measurement of neural activities. It's an indirect activity uh, measurement. So we're using a calcium imaging here to correlate uh, neural activity with bold. Because if we have calcium activity, it means there's neural activity. So today we're going to show you a four ball stimulation of the mouse and try to record the bold response in the four ball area of the brain and the calcium activity. <laughs> What? What the? F Almost the final prep. How we set up the mouse. Uh, we put them on. We make sure that their head is fixed so that they don't move a lot. So we make sure they have ventilation. We measure their respiration. And this right here is the coil that's going to measure the signal. And this here is going to be the fiber that measures the calcium signal simultaneously. So. We'll just move this, move it to the MRI, and that's that. <laughs> now, we put the mouse in the MRI, and we, they, we do the same steps as humans. Uh, right now, you're seeing the anatomical image that you see in hospitals. So this is the coronal <laughs> view of the mouse. The area that we're going to look for is right here. Uh, you see that you can see in the image that there's like a, a hole essentially. That's where Your the fiber is located, and we're also going to record calcium. And it's quite important that we also monitor the animal physiology, very related to the whole signal. So now we're going to take an EPI. So what you're hearing right now is basically an MRI making adjustments to the image. So right now, it's scanning. The sound you're hearing is the DPI sound, and what's happening is the MRI machine uses these gradients to localize where the signal is coming from. So what you're hearing is actually the gradients constantly switching back and forth, trying to localize the signal. Um, so it's like one of the fastest ways to get an image the brain. So now here are the results uh, from our experiment. As uh, you can see, these are the slices of the mouse, and you're able to see a very clear uh, bold response in the area. This is actually the calcium image, so at the same time, when the stimulation goes on, you see the increase in calcium, so it's suggesting that bold response means neural activity. As you saw earlier with the optogenetics, we can start adding a fiber here or here, or in the thalamus, and either turn it on or turn it off, what happens in the brain circuitry. Then we have mouse models where we can target those specific neurons. So we could turn those off and on and see how that affects the local circuitry. And 
That's basically what rodent system neuroscience FMI is. We first map an area, play around with how the circuitry is. This is the And my question is, do people actually stay still? Uh, they are instructed to. But can they? I think they try to. <laughs> and we kind of fix them with a lot of processing. Yeah, but it's the highest. Oh, okay, good. Tell you to Honestly, everything is a blank. <laughs> I hope I was able to easily explain how animal fMRI is done. It was, it, was a, it was a fun experience. Just get more, honestly, just because of our 15.2 Tesla magnet, I just want to get more data. Right now, I'm mapping the olfactory system in the mouse, and I'm, and I'm hoping in the future I could combine that with actual mouse behavior. So I'm looking forward to a lot to do here. Working here, I feel like we're like the NASA of the human body. Because the brain is such a galaxy like a structure. So we're trying to image so many things and try to understand it all. That's how I feel. <laughs> If you like mysteries and having like so many things to look for, the brain imaging is where it should be. Oh, exactly what she said. <laughs>